Hello and welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're back to daily with little Noah. I know I took a couple of days off there. I ended up sleeping on my wrist a little weird, but for today, I wanted to show you all what the airship looks like and kind of everything that you can do here. And then we'll probably just do a little bit of a hard run. So coming from the uh, all the way from the left to the right, you have your tutorials. So you can always check out tips that you've seen before and get some you know, get reminders on what's going on. Here you can see all your avatars. And like I mentioned before, I don't have the DLC right now, but these are all the basic avatars in the game. So you can always switch between them. And as you see, they provide different effects. In some cases, they also boost little pups. So the one that we have right now, Blazing Chef, boosts the first little pup's attack by 30% and the first skill little pup by 30%. You can always switch these before you start a run and, you know, if it's a benefit that you want, go and take it. The Adventurer's Logs is kind of like your achievement list. Uh, here you'll unlock trophies as rewards for, well, you know, doing different things in the game. As you can see, I haven't unlocked everything yet, but I've unlocked a good number of pieces. Adventurer support is interesting. So as you get through the game and you make friends with Zipper, he'll offer to help you out. What you can do is you can give Zipper treasures and he'll show up and, you know, at the, I believe it's the start of every area of every new area. And after a boss, he'll show up and uh, give you rewards. So random chests that have little pups, accessories, uh, gold. And as you give him more stuff, as you max this out, you can see that you'll get different things. For the airship, this is your main upgrade you know, if you've played things like Dead Cells or, um, I mean, most roguelites lately, this is your permanent upgrade system. So you see here, you'll have all these different effects that you can get. Some unlock new skills, some just boost your base stats, some change how you start, um, and unlock new little pups. There are a number of pages here, and, you know, you can buy them, upgrade things as you go. So we're actually going to pick up the HP boost because I do need that. And we'll pick up Potion Refinement. I do want to unlock everything on this file, but there may be reasons not to unlock everything. We'll go through that a little closer to when we set up a file for it. This is the Alchemize uh, Helper. So you can buy this upgrade in the repair shop, and when you do, you can talk to them once a run to get a free item. In this case, we get the Chain Ring. So we get 33% more damage for every consecutive hit. And that's for a wind element. There's a little pup house. So this is where you can bond with your little pups. And as you bond with them, you'll get bonus. You'll get bonuses. I uh, highly recommend something that I haven't been doing all that much to bond with the starting little pups because you'll always get their bonuses as you go. So let's actually do it right now. As you can see, I spend treasure chests to gift them things, and I unlock new skills for it. So, there we go. That's Huey maxed out. You can also see all the little pups in the game and check out their skills. So you can see the attack skill that they have, the actual skill that they can use, and then their ability. So as you collect duplicates, you unlock their star levels, you level them up. When you hit level three, you get their abilities. So you can see what it's like. You can see their stats at base and at max by hitting the Y button, uh, typically the top button on your controller by default. As you can see, I've maxed some of them out, have maxed all of them out, uh, still grinding out this file to be 100%. In the back here, you can see the uh, the golden cuckoos. They'll give you gold at the start of each run, and you can see it's quite a bit. And then here are statues. Statues are really powerful because they're basically permanent boost for your run. So as you can see here, you have just 15% more attack or 10% more skill damage. Uh, it can vary quite a bit as well, where you can get things like reduce shot prices, uh, fire damage up, start with more keys, which actually we probably want to equip. <laughs> so now I start with just two additional adventure keys. My setup for this run is just 15% more attack damage, 15% lower shot prices, critical damage plus 20%, 10% more gold and two extra keys. Although it could make sense to put something else in. 
there are a number of different ways you could do things. Um, I recommend to just you know give it a try and see what happens. If you're planning for a specific build, though, you do want to take a look at what statues you're bringing. For example, you can bring the ice damage along with the crit damage plus, and that makes a really good ice synergy build. Uh, if you're grinding out, it's a good idea to bring additional mana gain because, well, mana is what you need to unlock everything. If you're worried about survival, maximum HP is usually a pretty good choice. So try it out and see what you like. All right. And then at the end is over here. If you notice in the top, this is on hell mode right now. You can switch between modes once you finish the game once. And I believe you have to finish it on hard, but I don't exactly remember. Anyway, what I like to do usually is take a look at what the first item we get is and kind of make a choice on how do we want to run things. So I'll usually go back to your avatar and see, is there an avatar that helps this the most? Right, Blazing Chef increases HP restoration. So if you're not sure how the run's going to go, this is a pretty safe option. Uh, there's Frost Dancer, which increases crit damage by an additional 5%, which can be very powerful. Tempest Sage boosts burst damage, which can be useful. The Maid is also good for just grinding out. This top row is typically damage down, and default now it doesn't give us any benefits, so, you know. I think we're going to go with Frost Dancer. Despite the fact that we have the hit uh, up accessory, I don't think it's super useful to rely on as our main damage dealer. But even if we want to, we can still make it work. All right, and let's jump in and we'll just do a hard run. All right, here we go. Down we go. <laughs> I was unsure how I wanted to start that, but here we are. So you'll always start with your three default little pups, but the boosts are nice because they do come with those boosts. What do we have? Um, We'll go with Lionel to start. And then I'm going to do this. I should put Lionel first, arguably, but I'm not really feeling it. Okay, I want to... All right, we got him. There we go. So something important to note in uh, harder modes, uh, we're going to go for red crystal. I should probably go for green crystal. Oh, that was weird. Uh, but in harder modes, you have chances of getting... Ooh, Chuck is really good here. Hold on. I'm going to want to change up this strategy quite a bit. All right. Uh, hard modes, you know, more HP for the enemies, more damage. All the things that you normally expect. Okay. Chuck is really good because he gets you good hit count. He's really quick to use. So... There are rarely ever problems. <laughs> I say rarely because you could still run into issues, but you know what I mean. Alright, he... We're not going to really be trying to go too fast on this run. Um, now, here's a big difference that you have once you've been playing the game a bit. You can pick where you want to go. And in our case, we can get right up on Lillipups, or we could also unlock the ability to have new crystals there. Or we could take wind rewards up and get more little pup cauldrons. I'm actually going to take this. Um, you may have noticed that in boss fights you drop, uh, it, it drops these those weird symbols. That's what they're for. Just for letting you get um, little pups or uh, unlock bonuses and stages. Boy, I am. My rust is uh, showing. It's been a while since I streamed or did any sort of content. Uh, we'll take a Arrow Blaster. Arrow Blaster sounds good. Okay, so items. Um, all right, we'll take the Resilient Corsage. I'm not super fond of the support items personally, but uh, they can be useful. All right, who do we have? We have Angela. This is Frost and Glaciate. I'm not really sold on any of these, but I think we'll take the Glaciate. I'll also grab an additional key, just because you never know when keys will come in handy. 
Oh, something else important to note about uh, hard mode. You heal half as much as you normally would. Ace is actually a pretty good pickup right here. Um, so healing items just aren't as effective. Just keep that in mind as you go. All right. I'm going to do this for now. So generally, it's not a it's not a good idea to include um, normal little pups if you don't have to. But in this case, Ace gives us hit count, and hit count isn't a bad idea. Because even if it won't boost Ace's damage, I won't get the hit count. <laughs> I don't want to get uh, green crystals next time. Uh, it will boost Chuck's damage quite a bit. And as you can see, Chuck is already doing a lot of work for us. Chuck is crazy powerful. I slept on him for a long time. All right, so here's a little pup cauldron. We'll take Pierce because Pierce is most useful, but we don't actually want to use him. Uh, Pierce's usefulness is ex almost exclusively in the um, power that he adds. Big chest. All right. Increases chance to inflict enfeeble. Something that I was thinking about while I was taking a break. Um, what if I did a build that was really focused on status ailments? Ooh, look at that. Chuck just kind of melts. Like, I'm very tempted to just say we should take Chuck whenever we can. All right, let's see if we can get some fire. So at the start, you see those uh, cauldrons. Those are potions. Uh, they're potion refills, basically. Ooh, get it back over here. I want your money and your life, I guess. But uh, potion refills are really nice because that way you have a constant source of healing. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, what if I kind of get stuck out and left in the cold? Okay, what do we got in this shop? First chick clip, we'll take that. Um, I'll also take the storm dragon, I guess. That reduces damage taken, so we're not too concerned. One thing about hard mode is you will get... Um, hard mode is a bit weird when you think about the balance for it, because a big part of the struggle is being able to kill things before they kill you. And when you play hard mode, you still get uh, defensive items, which are significantly less useful. Uh, we're going to take the ice one, because I think long term that will help. You also usually want to focus on an element. In this case, I'm not exactly focusing on one, but it's not too big of a deal. Yet. Not yet. It will be sooner or later. Let's see what's over across this room. This is a good one for us, actually. King and Lionel. So this is a this is probably a good reason to focus more towards fire. Uh, let me see. No, we'll keep things as they are for now. Uh, I don't want to go into that room. We want to go across, though. So always avoid the long horizontal rooms. They just aren't super useful. All right, we'll just max out Lionel. Bonus room. Yeah, we'll take this. Like I said, we're not going for max speed. So it's okay to... Slow down a little bit. As you can see, Chuck like is able to attack again real quick. So he's pretty useful. Got him. Oh yeah. So we got the Inferno Ring for fire damage and the Frost Dragon. This is a good time to really sit down and think about, okay, what what are we actually trying to get done here? Um, I don't... Well, I guess you two are fine here, right? 
So let's take a look at our combo. See, King doesn't like to be in the air. So if I show you what I mean, uh, if we remove Chuck for a second, right? Lionel, King has the explosion there, but if you do it in the air, he doesn't really get it. So this is where we kind of have to make a bit of a choice. And I think we can actually solve that problem by running like this. Uh, hold on. Now, if I remember right... Oh, wait, that just brings us higher in the air. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Um, ideally, we'd want to... There's a little pup that brings you down, and ideally we'd want that to carry the run forward. But in the meantime, we're actually better off running without King here. I think we should put King on that side and then, yeah, let's move the other Lionel into the main party. Actually, I'm going to do this. And this will be our squad for now. All right. So we got to go through the long room. But the big reason for the change in party in this direction is to try and make sure that we keep an attack chain going. The last Lionel is not super important because I'm pretty sure Ace pushes them out of the way. But uh, it's good if something is under us or just gets caught. Alright, we're just looking to stack damage numbers. As you can see, like, it gets crazy real fast. <laughs> Alright, ooh, we got Tomoe on this one. So that's really good, and that kind of changes a lot about what we're doing here. Remember, our starting accessory only gives wind damage up, but it's not that big of a deal if it's just wind damage. Uh, yeah, I thought I forgot what I was talking about. Go me. Ooh. Ideally, you want to avoid taking hits as much as possible. Uh, but you do want to rack up nice big hit counts. Because that continues to make your wind little pups even better. Well, not a whole lot here to work off of. Increases skill damage, crit damage, fire. You kind of got to pick what you get, right? I guess this is not a bad time to talk about why did I pick to go with uh, Frost Dancer despite, you know, getting a wind accessory. Uh, it's the crit damage bonus. In the case that you do get a chance, like you do get a crit, it's nice to have the extra 5%. Like it certainly does not hurt. <laughs> and in every other case, ooh, damage up. Damage down, not too big of a deal. We'll take the damage up. We'll also take the damage down because it doesn't, we have plenty of money. But the extra 5% can be nice. It just helps out, right? Boy, this seems a lot easier than I uh, anticipated. I'm killing things much faster than normal. Um, this is the... Uh, we need to spend a key. don't really feel like doing that. Alright, this room we burst because that's a lot of guys with shields. Some rooms are just annoying, so you don't want to deal with them as much as humanly possible. Uh... I mean, there's not really much of a reason to go here, but we did. So we deal with those. Watch that. So if you're ever curious how to get a uh, handle of the game, what I, I highly recommend you just play 
play it lots, right? But uh, specifically focus on playing without getting hit. That's where you'll find the most benefit. Ooh. Yeah, we'll do the shop and the accessory cauldron. Right now, um, I'm more focused on just trying to be crazy on our damage, if at all possible. Alright. Chuck is actually really good for the shield guys because he attacks super quick, so you can get behind him and launch an attack that hits before they have a chance to turn around. Uh, I've had a number of times where trying to land that hit just doesn't go through. Ooh, we'll upgrade Chuck. We will definitely upgrade Chuck. Despite being an SR um, or a silver tier, Chuck is uh, very much gold tier in damage because of the hit count, right? Okay. Something else that's important to note is uh, there are many little pups that actually hit multiple times. Like even Lionel hits multiple times if you get him on the ground. So hit count bonuses are not in any way a bad thing to go for, even if you're not running wind. Ooh, ice damage up. That's the best one we got. Don't really have much of a choice. There go. That's cleared. It almost feels like easy mode. <laughs> like, when you have a certain amount of damage, it's very easy for things to just kind of fall into place real quick. Here we go. So one thing to note is that if this was a speed run, you'd basically never take all the rooms I'm taking. Even if I do that in a speed run anyway, that's just me being bad. Not a good thing. Like, this won't be a particularly fast run, but it will be a fun one. At least I hope. You can see the damage really start racking up. Oh yeah, there we go. We just kind of... Melted King. Okay. Fire attack bracelet. Um, Alright. We're going to go... It's This game is really pushing us more towards fire attack is what I'm noticing. And I think that's fine. Okay. One feature I haven't really talked about is uh, the two arrows that I have in the corner. Those are... Aether Thrust. And Aether Thrust is basically a dash that if you hit the enemy with it, it allows you to reset your combo. So you just can start using all your little pups all over again. It's really powerful, but it's kind of... I wouldn't say hard to use, but it's kind of easy to forget, is what I find. Right, let's go over this way. Uh, no spawns, yeah? Yeah, no spawns here. Even single rooms. Interesting. Okay, we got crystal. And then there's a bonus, well, a challenge room. Or an elemental challenge room there. Not super keen. Ooh, oh, this is hard. We want to take the 60% boost on fire because I think we do a hard transition towards fire next. We'll still lead with Chuck because uh, that's still a lot of damage. Actually, probably can't now that I think about it. And I'm surprised I got hit there. Ooh, Braddy. Alright. Reduce fire damage. Okay, max out Chuck because that's useful. Take the Arrow Blast Charm because that's also useful. Um. We don't really need more keys. Let me see. Okay, there's a chance that there's a another cauldron over here, so we'll take a look. Yep, another cauldron. Fire skill damage. Boost damage suppose you were burned. Yeah, that's another bonus. That's a bonus room. That's a damage bonus room though. Bonus rooms are basically not worth taking after the uh once they start including traps in them. Okay. 
Now let's talk about our team because we really need to. Um, Chuck is really good to have, but probably not at the front anymore. We likely want to open with Tomoe and we want to put King in there too. The reason we want to do this is we want to do as much damage up front as possible. Uh, and this helps. Next, ideally you want someone who gets burned. Um, because with burn we'll do more damage. That's the accessory I picked up. Increases damage to foes inflicted with burn and emulate by 100%. So that's double damage if we can hit them. The other thing is too, I'd actually probably like to move one of these two out. So I'm going to move King out and add another Fire Lilip up here. Uh, King's skill is not terrible, so we'll have him there. So we have one, we have Chuck in still because Chuck is really good at building the hit count for us, and that's kind of nice. Um, he also raises us up, so if we need an evade near the end of the combo, we have it. And Lionel attacks downwards, so we're never quite out entirely. Alright. As you can see, like, there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. There we go. Just absolutely melted. Like, a good build just always melts. We got Queen. That's interesting. Queen would be good if we had more ice up front, but because we're mostly fire, I'm not super interested. As you can see, like, we just did damage. <laughs> That's what happens when you really just make your build and go with it. Like, embrace a build and it will serve you. Ooh, Tristan and Felicity, what do we have here? Wind damage up? I think we're going all fire. So this is actually something where... If we put Tristan in, I think I put... I don't put... Uh, actually, I put Felicity in as the skill. Alright, we'll see how this goes. There's There was very little to say about that room. Being honest, there's not a whole lot to say about uh, the little pup choices, because at this point, it's just how do we power up uh, Tomoe as much as humanly possible? <laughs> to do stupid amounts of damage. Use crit rate, sure. I'll take that. Let me go back. There's better chance of finding the exit on this one side. Okay, we didn't find the exit, so so much for better chance. All right, this room is cleared quickly though. You can really see how it all just kind of comes together. All right, we're going to want to take melee damage. Now, because we don't have a whole lot of ways to get large number of hits. We do have far too much money, and I should probably stop picking up more money because we have way too much of it. take the exit and just keep moving. Yeah, I, I didn't really think too hard about it. At this point, we're on a pretty direct course to the end, so no need to worry. Uh, oops, wrong way. I'm used to there being something on both directions. Uh, okay, we'll take green still. Because, like, we still do get hit combo. It's not that hit combo is useless, it's that we need to be a little more deliberate about how we're doing things. Alright, these ones are always worth picking up just in case. Could get something good. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Alright. Up to Daisy. This brought us to the shop, which is okay. And yeah, there we go. 
that's done. Uh, we will go over here first. The cauldron. All right, we'll take ice crit rate. Uh, in this case, we just went for power rather than any like actual boost. Um, hands inflicting up, and we'll just go to the bottom route. As you get late into the runs, it becomes a lot less important. Like, I probably could have just skipped the shop, in all honesty. It's not that big of a deal to get it. Okay. And as you see, like, things go a lot faster. I do want to pick up some of these treasures. I do want to max out all little pups eventually. Like, if I'm going to be serious about doing any sort of runs, um, you want to... Ooh water wheel. One of, literally one of the hardest enemies to beat. Because <laughs> like if you don't kill him immediately, it's very easy for it to become a problem. That was not the right room. Um, but yeah, you'll want to max out all the little pups eventually. Um, because you do get their stat bonuses and those can be really nice. Oh yeah, we're just absolutely melting. Alright, we'll just take the first one and go. As you see, like, a couple of accessories up front go a long way to making you really powerful. There we go, got that. Uh, these chests are decently worth opening. We got a lot of Angela's this run. We got a lot of Angela's. I don't find Angela particularly useful, but... Oops. Wasn't paying attention to that hit. You gotta be careful of, uh... That girl. Remember her name. Alright, we'll go up here. Wind damage, maximum HP up, not the worst thing in the world. Skip this room. Chuck is also a dangerous one to fight. As you can see, my HP has dropped quite a bit. So we're going to want to probably use a potion uh, once I warp back over here. I believe potions... that is not the potion button. Uh, here's my potion button. As you can see, potions just... they literally just heal you. You can cancel out of potions as well. Um, so you're not like committed to it when you decide to start hitting the button. Alright, just kind of walked through and melted this room. Let's see what else we got. Burn becomes Immolate, we'll take it. Fire skill damage up. Didn't mean to take it, but we did. Ooh, crystal. Hit count, we'll take that. The crystals aren't, like, the all end all kind of things, but it will make a difference. Like, eventually it will really start, you'll really start to feel it. Right? Sometimes it is just hard to see what is going on. Uh, we will take the bottom room. Nope, we won't. Bonus stage. <laughs> Again, we don't need to do any of that. I'm just uh, a collector. <laughs> I like to pick things up. Okay, so now we're going to see just how good it could be. Fire's biggest weakness in this fight is that... Um, you don't get to hit things on the ground. Not that often, anyway. And fire's strongest literally on the ground. So. Dang, missed. We should pick all those up when we have the chance, because who knows if we will. 
Didn't expect that. All right, we made it through with uh, a bit of a damage, damage and vulnerability. It's been a while since I fought this boss, so just trying to if I remember. It's okay to take things a little safe. You never know when you need it, dude. Oops. Alright, taking it safe. Alright, we want to make sure that we get this break because now we got just open damage. Skill on. As you see, it kind of breaks our combo when that happens, which is a little unfortunate. But, here we go. Ow. Ow. <laughs> That's a little close. All right, we should be able to clear this pretty easily. There we go. We got it. I mean, being honest, that fight was um, a little rough. But we won. Okay, credits. We skip credits uh, for runs because there's no point. 28 minutes. You know, given everything that run had 28 minutes is actually pretty good uh but yeah that's kind of just like a basic much more casual kind of run that i'd be looking to do uh just to learn the game better practice have a little bit of fun right it's annoying that it kicks you out all the way i forgot about that and now that we have some more mana we can just come in here and kind of buy the rest of the stuff that we need well one for this file. And that's it. We completed the airship. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you had fun on this run. Uh, this is, I'll be picking up Daily Little Noah once again, as you can see. And yeah, tune in next time for something maybe a bit different. Maybe it's just a couple of challenge runs. I'm not sure yet. I usually figure out the day of. Anyway, thanks and uh, hope to see you later. Bye, all.